Hello, welcome to Today Pass. I'm Scott, joined by Silent Stig here. We call him Silent Stiggy Bob. And we're doing another driving test uh, route at Eisenworth Driving Test Centre, one of the or longer ones okay so we're going to do a full route here and what we're going to do is going to show you some of towards how uh hounslow side of isleworth and we're going to show you hopefully the double roundabout system that we did on our last video so um you can have a look at the last video but we didn't do both roundabouts on that one and what i said on that video was that a lot of people don't see the second roundabout it's super common a lot of driving test centers not just Isleworth many uh, people don't see the second roundabout so it's quite important to study this but also to uh, practice this on your driving test well done Stig so this roundabout here we came out the test center left left onto this road which is the naughty road um, where Stig has limited visibility at that first mini roundabout. He slowed down enough to actually see the motorbike coming out of the side uh, entrance on that roundabout there and stopped and gave priority as Stig needs to. It's a roundabout. We give priority to the right. Really good. Bonus points there, Stig. I wish people could actually get bonus points on their driving test. It'd probably give them some kind of incentive or gamify it. Well, you know? Yep. Roundabout. You can look early. Yep. Through the gap, past the bush. Okay, so you can look around the George Bush? Through the bush. Through the bush. All right, you look uh, through the George Bush. That's where I saw the bike. Excellent. Before, before I ever got to the roundabout. There you go. So these are sort of very advanced look, tips, if look you like. Look through the gaps. Yeah, look through the gaps. Look through the gaps in the parked cars. Look through, under, over, around vehicles, anything that you can get for your advantage. It's really going to help you to plan early. And that is the secret to a safe driver. It's someone that can look long, plan early, see the signal on the bus as an example, early, slow down early, give priority early, double check in for bicycles and other road Just users. Just a quick thing about the bus. Although we have priority to turn left, first section of he was coming at quite to the right, and you could see from the body language of the bus, he wasn't going to stop. Okay, so Stig can see from the body language of the bus that he's not going to stop. What, what was the key indicator of the body language? The speed. The speed. The wheels. Right. And the signal. There you go. So Stig's Maybe not. the speed. Yeah, Stig's not just picking up on any one topic. He's using a combination of multiple. So he's got speed, signal, and what did you say position. the other one was? Position. So these three are almost... And the steering. They're giving him like a, is that person going to do it? Well, let's have a look at their speed. Yes, at that speed, it looks like they're going to do it. Oh, let's look at their signal. Oh, that signal looks like they're going to do it. And their position is also a way of signaling and showing people where they're intending to go. So Stig's picking up on multiple clues to give him a certain sort of conclusion to whatever the problem is that Stig's trying to solve. So that's really good way and you can use this for your maneuvers as well. So when you're doing bay parking, as an example, you might have one reference point, okay? But you've got multiple ways of seeing it. So you might use your mirrors to see the lines. You might look out your window to see the line. You might look out the front and the back of the vehicle. And all these different perspectives, all these different clues make you more certain about the position of your vehicle for the maneuver or about the position of what well, another other, vehicle well, might do. Thing is yep. Don't assume you're right of way. Don't assume you right of way. have the right of way. Like in that roundabout when that bus came through. Yep, okay. Although we have priority. Okay. We have to wait for him because of where he was approaching the mini Yes, roundabout. yes. So that's um, actually a very good, important um, piece of information. So I'd like to just paint a new picture for you. So Stig's referring to the roundabout. Um, what's another common area for this situation to come up? Uh, even though you've got priority, okay? So you're on a, a nice long straight road and there's no parked cars on your side of the road. The parked cars are on the other side of the road, just like what we can see now. 
That means that our side is free of any hazards and our lane is open and we have priority because it's our side of the road. But like Stig said, don't assume you have priority because the oncoming car, regardless, might keep pushing, forcing us to stop and avoid an accident. Now, technically, we have priority, so we haven't done anything incorrect, but we're still stopping because we're a responsible road user. We're avoiding a situation where an accident might happen, showing the examiner we're a more defensive driver. But it's a fine line, especially when you're learning to drive, to have this balance between knowing when to keep going and knowing when to stop. So for the situation that Stig's referring to, the roundabout, he knew by body language, all the multiple clues they picked up, that bus driver is just going to keep going. Okay. And in the situation where I'm referring to, which is a long straight road, just like what's happening here, the speed of the vehicle. So if you had a look at that oncoming vehicle, which Stig actually just moved out of change direction to give priority to, uh, it wasn't slowing down. In fact, I would say it looked like it might have slightly been increasing in speed. Obviously, if you see an oncoming vehicle increasing speed coming towards you, the more defensive action now is for you to take a safe area to give space to that vehicle to allow it to pass, which is the safer option. Roundabout, turning right. This almost looks like we're in Southall, but we're not. We're coming round towards Hounslow. So we're turning right on the roundabout. Stig's look to the right, seeing that there's lots of traffic coming, obviously stopping, waiting for that opportunity to go. Nice big gap in the traffic on the right, and it's safe for us to walk out. Therefore, we can drive out. Amazing steering there. Stig, well done. Slightly on the roundabout because the pavement here is so close, we need to slightly go on that roundabout to avoid hitting the pavement. So something I've mentioned in other videos, and I've actually been criticized for saying, um, however, it is true. And then, if you, especially if you're driving a larger vehicle, uh, maybe a pickup truck or something long, like an old Mercedes or something like that, um, then you will need to go slightly on the circle to avoid driving on the pavement. So that's what we talk about is Here's being a necessary. Yeah. The gap's going to be smaller, so you've got to yep. speed. Less space of speed. I think oh, Stig's tempted to stop, stop yeah. because the bus is over the line slightly, isn't it? So when we see a vehicle is over the center line, that's a good indication that you probably need to come to a stop. So good assessment there, Stig. So first of all, what was your main concern? Uh, we talked about brows of hills. We've got a zebra crossing there. Um, but what's your main concern about the bus initially? Well, well we're going to get through. Okay. And he wasn't going to stop anyone. Right. So uh, was it the fact that it was over the line? Was it yeah, the speed? Yeah, it's already over the line. Yeah, it's over the line, so and you got a nice little clue. And the lane was quite tight. Yep. Okay, and the lane, you could see the width of the road was particularly and you narrow. And these wheels were over the line. Yeah. So there's not enough space. So there's lots of clues. Anything about speed? Not particularly concerned well, about that? More the position? Well, so the bus had no room. There was no way the bus could do anything yep. differently. Okay. So that's it. It's forced to keep going, really. There's nowhere yeah. it can go. So we know that. We can see that it's path, it's direction, and the space of the road as well. A few things there to take into consideration. Okay, we're turning we're straight. straight. Okay, so we're going straight across. Uh, more high street, more busy roads, big intersection here. We're going to miss the high street. So okay. Go around. Around the back of the high street. So we're not going to go into the big busy high street, but we are going to be going through these smaller high streets. Obviously, plenty of pedestrians. I noticed back where we had a zebra crossing, there was a pedestrian standing by the zebra crossing. Right, she had our back towards us. But, you know, do take care when you're at a pedestrian crossing and a person standing there. We're not too sure what they're going to do the next. Body yeah, read the body language. So... We had that lady, she had her back turned to us. Most likely she's not going to cross, but Stig was just exercising a little bit of caution. He could see she wasn't going to cross, so he just gently kept going through the zebra crossing there. Um, but big topic that comes up on a lot of people's driving tests, they fail for zebra crossings. Does it hit the brake when they see someone there? Okay. The... So there's that one extreme, just slamming on the brake. The brake yeah, no one's there. Going. Yeah. Just approach it slowly. And the complete opposite is when someone doesn't see there's a person at the and doesn't stop. Yeah. So behind. see that? Yeah. The man that walked across the pavement might step up around. Yep. Yeah. And this one actually just 
walked out in the road regardless. Okay, well done. So uh, Stig's being very defensive, just just adjusting his speed. Here, yeah, yeah. no choice. Yeah. The examiner's not going to tell you where to go. Okay. So follow the road. Yes. And the examiner's not telling us where to go because there's no signs there's showing no us. There's no, there's no it's choice. a one way. Yeah. So this is the... Do I need to signal? This is, no, you don't, well, this is an area where the examiner would say, will it benefit anybody? So you could argue it would benefit those guys munching the kebabs over there. The pedestrians. No, they're not going to cross. You can they're see not going to cross. I don't believe they are. Way. Cyclists behind us, maybe. Motorbike. Okay. So it's just a question of you, if you believe it's going to benefit or not. It's not a bad thing, but if the signal stayed on now, people are going to think you're turning into this side road. So do be prepared to cancel signals if you do use the signals. So we're at the part of Hounslow now. Good, so we're going to be turning right shortly after this bend. So Stig's using the right lane because he's positioning himself early for the directions that the examiner has given him. So just after the bend, turning right at the traffic lights, please, Stig. Actually, next, next. next traffic lights, please, Stig. So if we're looking at road markings here, we can say it's ahead only. Uh, and we've got the traffic lights with the filter arrow, which is the green arrow pointing straight ahead, backed up by the mandatory arrow underneath it, which was the order, the circle sign with the straight arrows. Okay, so we can see that's pretty much straight ahead. This is where I used to train to become a driving instructor. It's now a block of flats. All right, so we're going to be in a right-only lane. What will Stig do next? Oh, wow, Stiggy's exercising caution, so he saw the keep clear zone there. Waited until he saw a gap for his vehicle on the other side of the keep clear zone. That could be a yellow box junction in the middle of the road. You must wait until you see that gap on the opposite side yeah, before proceeding. One -way street so on right. the one-way road here, Stig's keeping to the right because at the going to be turning right. Stick slowed down, exercising caution, because we had this guy coming out of the superstore here on the left. Okay, we're in the correct lane for our right turn. You can see how complicated this one-way system can be. So watching these videos and seeing all of these situations, we're literally getting almost every situation you could possibly get. We had a car parking on the one-way system. You had a person walking out. You have the traffic lights, which are constantly rapidly changing on you. You have to keep your position, watch your speed. There's lots of stuff to take into consideration. Obviously, all the road markings and street signs there are going to help us to plan early so that we can try our best to adjust for all these different situations which may come up. So using the signposts and the lampposts and the road markings so that we can see the signs like now, so Steve said, we're going to keep to the left. We've got a straight arrow. We know we're going straight. Take your right you here. can turn right here, but we're going to go straight. We also had the ding-dong noise on the car, and we've got the 20 mile an hour speed limits imprinted on the road surface. So this is a lot of information to be taken in. Pedestrian crossing in a bend. Pedestrians using the crossing, even though it's a green light. Is it safe? Yes. No more pedestrians. We proceed. But we could come around the corner and be faced with anything in the middle of the road just like here so look at this bend we can't see around the brick wall around this bend exercising caution doing roughly 10 miles an hour and look at this straight ahead. straight ahead again so look at the lane discipline the road markings very good from Stig here maintaining his side of the road looking for road markings exercising caution in that last bend as well so it's super important less c less speed less space to speed you know these are the, like i said before number one and number two rules of learning to drive so we've got the green light here can we see through the traffic can we see what's happening further down the road i see a traffic light that's changing i saw a gentleman that crossed over the road i see some bus stops some shops some cyclists so we might have multiple reasons for coming to a slow to a stop here. The green light did just change green, so it's likely to stay green, although there's pedestrians by the train station that's pushed the button. 
that could potentially make the crossing change back to red again. So we are still in the 20 zone, so you heard the bump there, uh, the bing bong noise. But looking ahead, can you see the bigger circles now telling us that this is a change of speed? So from these signs onwards, we're in a 30 mile an hour zone. Don't get too happy when you see the 30 signs, as you can only start to go over 20 once you've reached the sign. Once you pass the sign. Once you pass the sign. That's where the zone is enforced. I failed one of my driving tests because I started to do 25 miles an hour before the sign, not past the sign like Stiggy just mentioned. Okay, so we've got more signs here. We've got bumps, but that's pointed to the side road, not going to concern us. Next hazard would be the bicycle. The bicycle is going to you know, limit the amount of space we've got. We're going to choose an opportunity to overtake. We, we, check in, yeah, we can use the hatch markings. So we're checking mirrors to change direc direction, making sure we've gone at least a few car lengths past the bicycle before checking the mirrors yeah, and changing you know, direction again. Okay, so will the blue Mercedes come out round? the position. bus here so look the blue mercedes look at the person yeah. multiple hazards could come out we've got two roundabouts we're turning right at the first roundabout see if you can spot where the second roundabout is so it's nice and clear no traffic on the right to stop for and then look at this bam we're off the first roundabout straight away into the second roundabout okay. we have a blocker car so the traffic on the right had to stop for the traffic on their right which is what we call the blocker car if you're not too sure about this all of this is taught to you on our intensive courses we'll cover all of the you know advanced information as well as the basic information to try and give you the best chance of passing your driving test okay so this is a tricky situation to come into this is the crossroads on the a4 now there's multiple ways of doing a crossroad on the A4. This is one of them after the double roundabouts. Really tricky and technical route. Now we go into the middle and if we had oncoming traffic, which we don't have at this crossroads because they've got giveaway lines on the oncoming traffic. It's a side road, not really a main road so much. So then we would wait in the middle and stop until it's safe to continue to turn. Okay, obviously we didn't have any oncoming traffic, so we could just keep going, following the traffic in front and doing our turn, which is nice, um, but that is less likely to have. So quite common, I've noticed at Isleworth, you're coming to a crossroads. It could be the A4, which is quite a daunting anxiety point. Uh, lots of lanes, lots of traffic around you, traffic lights, situations where you might not know where to stop or to go into the junction. So lots of practice with a qualified driving instructor will give you this confidence or watch plenty of videos. Make sure that you put all the information that you know, read, watch, listen to into practice because this information will not actually progress into actions unless you're putting that work in. Okay, so a lot of people read a lot of books, but they don't put any of it into practice. They're just book smart. They're not actually experienced. And this makes the big difference between somebody that's super intelligent from reading books their whole life, but actually can't put it into the real world because they haven't put that practice, that knowledge into practice. Okay, knowledge is power if it's remembered and used. Okay, yeah. It's not my quote, but it's a very good quote. All right, Stiggy, thank you very much. But what are you doing? This is a straight only light. Ah, oh, I got confused because this camera's in front of me. I can't see this traffic light. <laughs> I saw the green arrows on the left. Which is, this is a good point to come up. So people see the green arrows. And think, oh, I can go. But we're turning right. Are any of those green arrows pointing right? No. So we can't go. So only people going where the arrows are pointing can go. We have a separate lane or a separate traffic light here, which is red. And this is for the traffic turning right. So this leads into lots of confusion. So those green arrows are called filter lights. We have a separate traffic light here. You can see it's changing for us, red for everybody else now. We have a filter arrow, which is lovely. So what that means is that the oncoming traffic that would cross our path is actually held at a red light. So we don't need to concern ourselves about stopping and giving priority only because we have a filter light, which stops the oncoming traffic and all other traffic that would cross our path 
from going. Obviously, be responsible. Check to see if someone's jumped to light. But knowing the difference between a green circle and a green arrow, a filter light, makes you make decisions early, safely, and just show your examiner that you're making decisions, you know, good, safe, early, like I just mentioned, which is what you need to be doing to be, you know, a safe road user. Okay, um, we're on the side roads here. You could do maneuvers on these side roads. This is very close to the test center. So pretty much coming back towards the test center. This would be the end of the route. Uh, well, we got a nice large lane here, which is which is really nice. Um, the uh, Stiggy here is doing a good effort of giving a little bit of extra room because Stig can. He has a little bit of extra room on the left. So he's sharing the road with the oncoming traffic. Really good, nice position. So it's going back to that bit earlier. We're not assuming we have priority. We're sharing the road. We're making it a much safer environment and a more pleasant environment to be driving in. That's the idea at least. Okay, at the roundabout, we're going straight. Very poor visibility to the right. So we're practically stopping, leaning forwards, looking into the right. We now know it's clear. We, we can use the same assessment as if we were a pedestrian walking out to the road. You know, we get to a point where we look, we step out a little bit, look a little bit more, and then we can commit once we can see it's safe to go. This is called peep and creep. So if you do driving lessons and you have an ex, uh, instructor that's taught you peep and creep, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then um, you know you can mention it to your instructor or if you know how to do it, put it into practice, private practice. However you're learning, like I said, you've got the knowledge, now put it into practice or remember and put it into practice. Okay, at the end of the road, Stig, turn right. Nice mirror checks for your change of direction which back up the mirror checks for the signal. I would say mirror checks for change direction, probably the most important mirror checks. That's when you're going around parked cars, buses at bus stops, any obstruction that you need to change direction for. We're looking out for motorbikes, bicycles, any traffic that could potentially overtake so that we know it's safe before we change our direction. That is why it's super important. We don't want to cause any accidents. We must be a responsible road user. You can see he's on the phone. So. All right, so we have pedestrian crossing here on the right. Uh, Stiggy was worried because there was a person standing actually facing the crossing this time. Uh, no 360 cameras on this video. If you want 360 cameras back, please request it. Uh, if I get 100 likes on this video and people request it, I'll bring back 360 camera so I can show you exactly what we're talking about, which I feel really benefits the viewer. Uh, however, it hasn't seemed to make a huge impact. So if people are reluctant to make the comments, that's one thing. But if it's something that you want, Please, please, please help me help you to make the best videos so that you can learn to drive in a nice, comfortable and safe environment at home. Okay, if you're worried. On your sofa. Yeah, on your sofa. There you go. <laughs> nice cup of tea and a biscuit. Okay, so we're back towards the test center now. Uh, we've got our bus lane. We, we mentioned this on a previous video. This bus lane is 24-7. The signs don't help. So if you actually see a blue sign with a bus on it that says, at any time, it would be nice if the council actually spent, what, three more pounds to put three little stickers that said N-O-T, not at any time. Because that's what it really means. You're not allowed to use it at any time. Stig's checked his mirrors. He's actually signaled here. He's examiner. Me. As, uh, well, maybe I did or didn't. At the traffic lights turning left. Um, so make sure you also signal for your left turn. If you hear your examiner say left, Just you... Just a, a quick thing. All the, all the bus lanes in Hounslow or Isleworth Test Centre do not use. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news now. Can we just hear that one more time, please, all Diggy? All bus lanes. All bus lanes. In Isleworth Test Centre. <gasps> I don't, don't, use. don't use. Okay, that's it. Enough said. You heard it here. Do not use any bus lanes at any time at, any time at Isleworth Driving Test Centre. Do we need to know why? <laughs> I want to know why. The signs say do not use. All of them? Yeah. Well, they changed why. it. There used, to be, there used to be some bus lanes you could use. Yeah. But recently they made changes. And, and it's a change of wall too. 
do not use. Can you see this smile, ladies and gentlemen? This is a genuine smile. I'm sure you can tell. So you can relax and just drive and not worry about the bus That's lanes. another word I love, relax. Beautiful. Music to my you ears. You don't need to worry about bus lanes. Yeah. Wow, if you guys have stayed to the end of the video, please give a like for Stiggy here, giving us that nugget there of information. Now, you're not going to be, oh my, that's just brilliant. No bus lanes at Isleworth. Wow, all the, all the beautiful images in my head of teaching people not to use bus lanes at Isleworth are just making me feel so much more relaxed now. Love it. Okay, so if you want to do your driving test at Isleworth and you want somebody that's really experienced, then Stiggy is your man. Uh, if you look down in the comments below, you will find in the description, sorry, not the comments, uh, information to get in touch and book your course or book your lessons at Isleworth or any driving test centre in West London's called We Cover West London in general. So if you're interested, uh, look in the description down below. You can contact us and uh, we'll get you booked in and get you sorted out for driving test. And fingers crossed, there's a good example on the road. So Stick, what's a good example? What's happening That's here? Oncoming traffic. Okay, so this is the road I really am not too keen on at Isleworth. Do it slower. Yeah. If you don't, stop. Okay, that's it. That's all you can do, isn't it, really? Just take your time on this road. It's at the beginning and the end of your test, and that's really where you want to be taking your time as well. You don't, you don't have to start you rushing straight away. You don't want to fail one minute into creating bank. Yeah. So it, 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 I remember exactly how it felt for my driving tests. Um, sweaty hands, feeling sick. Don't ask me why, but I need to pee. Every two seconds, I'll literally leave the toilet and then turn around and go back to have another pee. Or well, not really a pee, more of a tinkle than a pee. But um, yeah, just that's the way I feel when I'm going for exam. So if you're similar, you got any of these symptoms, if you're shaky at all, you can go to a pharmacist. If you're nervous, you can yeah. talk to yourself and do... Talk to yourself, talk which to is called self-commentary. And what you're going to do. So yeah. keep you away from being nervous. Yep. Yeah. Concentrate on how to drive. Take the next right into Fleming Way. Uh, roundabout there was clear. So you would say mirror, center mirror, right mirror, yep. signal. Yep. Right. Yep. I had slow a student. Down, look right into the mirror, look right into the road, and then slowly turn in. Mm -hmm. Look yep. ahead. Check behind you. There's a car behind us following us. Giovanni, right, if you're there and you see this right. video, that's exactly what he did on his test. And he passed first time. I told him, do self-commentary if you're happy with that. Some people are. I'm a person that likes self-commentary. Uh, I think Stig's probably on board with self-commentary as well. It's a very good way of learning as well. Okay, forwards Bay Park here, Stig. This is your manoeuvre, so make sure you don't... I want to mess it up. <laughs> you failed, Stig! Oh my god, so good. The whole way through the video, absolutely perfect. And then you mess up a forwards bay park. How can you sure? do that? Are you sure about that? <laughs> no, he's in, ladies and gentlemen, obviously he's in. A like on the video will help us out tremendously. I've been Scott, this has been Stig. This is Two Day Pass. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.